we have a Darren Waller signing, an NFL legend stops by, and a whole lot of highlights from the Giants. Let's go. What is going on guys? What is going on 27 squad? Welcome back in to another video and listen we've got a lot to talk about today. First and foremost we've been seeing a lot of traffic on this channel. Just a lot of new subscribers. A lot of people uh, interacting in the comments. I'm just loving seeing the growth on this channel. I just want to say from the bottom of my heart guys I say this every couple of videos. I really want you guys to know this. How much I appreciate you guys and how crazy it is that you guys really look forward to hearing some BS from me <laughs> but in all seriousness guys thank you your view your subscription your like your comment everything means the world all right first and foremost listen we have a darren waller signing but not at ota practice instead he just dropped a new music video oh my god you guys remember when the giants drafted Kadarius tony back in 2021 and we're like is he a wide receiver or a rapper i can't believe this but we have something worse in darren waller as you guys know darren waller recently got divorced to WNBA player Kelsey Plum who I mean that's a that's a that's a bag to fumble right there man but he seems to be going through it man going through the motions he's not been himself lately he got inspired got writing some music and came out with a music video listen it happens to the best of us even guys like Jinxie if you guys know who Jinxie is broke up with Brecky Hill and he wasn't live streaming for a whole week same thing with Darren Waller he's taking his time off thinking about his divorce and <laughs> making music videos and my god it's just it's it's cringe how are you i am under the water please help me Bro is really trying to bring R&B back, like 2005 Dancing in the Rain R&B, he's trying to bring it back. So we still don't have a timetable on when Darren Waller is coming back, but we know he's kind of okay, is he? In other news, we have NFL legend Steve Smith, no, not New York Giants Steve Smith, Carolina Panthers and Baltimore Ravens Steve Smith dropping by. He also came by last year. I was a little confused of what the connection was, but then I remembered that Joe Shane was in Carolina for a bit of time, and I guess, and I'm assuming that he was in, he was there at the same time that Steve Smith was there in Carolina. So I guess that's pretty much the only relationship there, and Dable says he knows him as well. Dable said, quote, we have a good relationship with him, Joe Shane and I. He's coming out watching practice. I think he's a good sounding board for some of the young guys, particularly some of the young receivers. We have a good relationship with Steve. Joe, obviously at Carolina, and I've known him. A lot of respect for his game, how he's played. We had him last year too. So I think it's great. We have a mix of veteran guys and a lot of young guys at the wide receiver position as well. Steve Smith is going to be there for everybody, but as Dable said, particularly with the wide receivers, I think it's good for young guys like Jalen Hyatt, Wandale Robinson to kind of learn from him a bit and have him be a little bit of a mentor in the couple of days that he's going to be there. Now let's get on to practice. Daniel Jones is still only doing individual drills and seven on seven. We have yet to see him on 11 on 11 drills. I don't know if that's even going to happen until he is cleared to play like 100%. We might not see him do 11 on 11s at all until that happens. And with Drew Locke taking over as the first team quarterback on 11 on 11 drills, he throws a touchdown to Aguirre Asante, the undrafted rookie free agent from Wyoming. I thought it's very interesting that he's been working with Daniel Jones and Drew Locke. Drew Locke working with the first team on 11 on 11s and Daniel Jones, I assume, working with the first team on 7 on 7 drills. So I think that's pretty interesting that we have a rookie wide receiver who I probably thought was probably the best undrafted guy that we got. I didn't make an undrafted video, guys. I'm so sorry. I just didn't have time and time is moving and we got these OTAs going on. I felt like there was no point. But a year Asante is someone I really liked, probably the best out of all of them. And I'm glad that he's kind of working his way up. It, it's an interesting story. I thought the wide receiver depth chart was going to be kind of, you know, rounded out by this time. We kind of know who's going to be on the roster. I didn't think there was going to be much of a surprise. I thought the biggest surprise might be like Bryce Ford Wheaton making the roster, but a year Asante working with first team guys. So that's interesting. And to throw it back to Daniel Jones, 
pause. He also had good completions to Wanda Robinson, Darius Slayton, Allen Robinson, and Ayer Asante. So again, working with the first team guys. I, I really like that. Drew Locke had himself a day. He's been struggling working as the first team quarterback for a while, but this was his day, placing it perfectly with velocity to get through levels of the defense. That's what I like to see from Drew Locke. I just want to see everybody do well. So, and I want to see Wanda Robinson do well as well. So um, that's fun to see. And a little bit of an update on Darius Slayton. He had himself a decent day as well and he just didn't look happy going into that press conference that he had and he just didn't look like he was full of energy that he usually is he's usually kind of witty kind of nerdy kind of fun to to be around in press conferences just didn't seem that way in this press conference but he did say that he is back because the Giants implemented incentives into his contract as of right now the same exact contract just added more incentives I just feel like it's kind of a weird reason to come back because you know that the the Giants added heavily to the wide receiving core, adding Malik Neighbors and Allen Robinson. That's going to take a lot of targets and a lot of attention, and a lot of opportunities away from Darius Slayton. It's weird that there were that what got him to come back was added incentives. It's not like he's for sure going to meet those expectations and incentives because of the wide receiver room that they have. Now he could depend on injuries, but he would have to depend on the wide receiving core kind of falling apart for him to really get more of those incentives. So that's kind of weird. Now let's move on to the defensive side of things. Now the defense is starting to catch up a bit. Like I said, when it comes to these OTAs, the offense is always favored. So when you see these touchdowns, when you see these nice grabs, take it with a little bit of a grain of salt. It's great to see the offense doing well, especially the wide receiver catching balls, getting open, right? But it's really really just uh, geared towards the offense. When you see the defense making a play, that is really good because there are so much things against them. They can't tackle. They can't grab. They have no pads on. They can't really be very physical. They really have to play a vanilla defense. So when you see defenders doing well in things like OTAs, it should really be looked at as a great deal of impression. Now, Giants.com came out with this interesting stat that the Giants were tied with the Ravens for the most takeaways in the regular season just last year with 31. I did not know that at all. I know the Giants got off to a hot streak starting with the Miami Dolphins after not having a takeover of uh, a takeaway at all. And then Jason Pinnock kind of lit a fire with that defense from with the pick six. But after that, the Giants were on fire, getting a lot of turnovers each game. But I did not know we led the league in turnovers last year and 18 of them were interceptions. That is insane to me, which is third most in the NFL. Hopefully the Giants can build on that. I know they're changing their scheme pr pretty much like fundamentally. Everything about their defense is going to be different. They're going to be doing a lot more four-man rushes as opposed to heavy z cover zero blitzes that Wing Martindale lot like to do. Wing Martindale also loved to run man defense. We ran a lot of zone as well to compensate for the lack of talent that we had that they can't play man defense, but we got uh, a lot of zone defenders and now we're going to be playing a heavy zone defense, a lot less blitzes. So uh, things are going to be instrumentally different to with our defense so it's going to be interesting to see how the Giants are going to be able to take away the ball there now zone defenses I always said this man defense I prefer but zone defense if you want to bait the quarterback if you're trying to get a lot of turnovers zone defense is the way to go obviously you bait the quarterback you make him think that something's open is not you close on it uh, with zone defense you anticipation uh, football IQ playing within your zones that all takes part in playing zone defense but the big risk is there is a risk and reward factor where you can bait the quarterback and sometimes you lose you know so I prefer man defense but I understand that playing zone can force more turnovers leading the strong defensive performance today was Dane Belton who tipped up a pass intended for Wandale Robinson and almost nearly intercepted it this was I think the second second time now in a row that he's tipped up the pass and almost came up with a, with an interception I'm not really worried about him not catching the ball. I just want him to be there. Uh, we know that Dane Bowen in years past since he's been with the Giants has been a little bit of a ball hawk every time he gets on the field. So that's nice to see. He has a knack for finding the football. And again, now five out of five times we see 
Deontay Banks make plays. It says here, Deontay Banks played good coverage all afternoon. He ran step for step with Jalen Hyatt on a deep pass and undercut a throw to Darius Slayton. This is something I want to see. Deontay Banks is having an absolute... Nobody's even talking about this because we want to talk about the younger players, the guys, you know, the position battles. We want to talk about the undrafted guys. We want to talk about Daniel Jones. Nobody's talking about Deontay Banks as much. He, if you guys remember, he absolutely struggled last season because Brian Dable, Wink Martindale, whoever, Jerome Henderson even, I mean, they really put his feet to the fire. They said, listen, you are going to learn the hard way. They are going to target you. We knew this already. The first day of training camp, even going in, uh, going back to OTAs, he was targeted immensely and he struggled. But then as the season went on, he started to get the hang of it. A lot of times, especially at the cornerback position and you see it with the offensive tackle position the game just gets too fast for players at that position those young players at those at those two positions and more often than not even really talented prospects coming out can never get on their feet because they can never get the game to slow down enough for them it really seems like Deontay Banks is starting to get the hang of it and he is solidifying himself as our number one corner and I am extremely excited for that Speaking of cornerbacks in the OTAs, Darnay Holmes, who on this channel we crowned the king of practice. Darnay Holmes, who always looks like the best corner on the field every offseason, made the play of the day, quoted by John Schmelk. He says, Darnay Holmes made the play of the day, knocking a ball loose and recovering it before bringing it back all the way. Listen, Darnay Holmes always impresses. We have to see what it's like on the field, but glad he's back. Glad that we have some depth there, but man, I just don't want to see him start. We have a couple of edge rushers that stood out as well. Interesting because there's no pads on. It's really kind of weird. I got to see how they're really getting to the backfield with no, like not a lot of contact going on, but uh, it says Kayvon Thibodeau, Aziz Ojolari, and Boogie Basham all had a good day in the backfield today. Uh, it says particularly Aziz Ojolari got into the backfield on one pass play, which could have been a sack if it were a full speed contact. Boogie Basham knocked the ball down at the line of scrimmage and line Linebacker Darius Musau showed off his coverage ability. Yeah, it seems like Darius Darius Musau is playing pretty well as well. I'm seeing him in a couple of these of these articles going back from I believe day one or day two. I've been seeing him kind of bits and pieces, uh, him being uh, notarized. Now he's a guy I didn't think was going to provide much because the Giants are pretty good with the linebacking group. But hey, he he could be a, a guy that sees some time over you know other other uh, linebackers as well, like Carter Coughlin or or Darian Beavers as well. And one last tidbit before we get out of here today, Brian Dable was asked about his play calling. This is what he had to say: "I've called plays for a long time, so it's good to get out here at practice and do it. But there's a whole process that goes through with it. There's training camp, there's OTAs. I'll make the decision, like I said back." In March that I feel is best. So we don't know yet if Brian Dable will take over play calling duties, but the fact that he's kind of entertaining it right now makes me feel like he is absolutely going to be calling plays this uh, this season. And I think to compensate for that, back in I don't I, I want to say March, maybe February, maybe even after that. I think it was after the Wing Martindale debacle, the Giants promoted Mike Kafka to assistant head coach. I assume it was to give him another title as opposed to just calling him offensive coordinator and then taking away his play calling duties. A little bit of a uh, little bit of mind games that I see that's going on there, trying to trying to balance out uh, Mike Kafka's role there with the New York Giants. They don't want to make him seem like he's not doing anything, so they'll just elevate him to to assistant head coach uh, while taking away his play calling duties. All right, so that is everything I have for you guys today. I will be back tomorrow for the sixth OTA practice. We are halfway through this thing. I don't know. Usually the last day, they don't post anything. I, th I don't think it's open to anybody on the last day of OTA. So I don't know. But hey, we're halfway through it. Thank you guys for joining. We will see you guys in tomorrow. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Later. Woo!